How's it going, everyone? Very excited to be here today with you to answer some of your questions. Yes, today it's Cubase Q&A. All right, so now before I start answering questions, if this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. If you love this video, please share and like. That actually helps me a lot. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and start with question number one. Hey Chris, I have one stereo track. How to invert the phase only on one side? For example, the left channel of that stereo file. Thank you. Okay, cool, good questions. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you'll be able to achieve that. Okay, first I have, uh, here in my session, I have one stereo drum loop. Okay, so let's say I just want to phase reverse for some reason, just for the sake of this example, uh, just the left side, like you were asking, the left side of this stereo drum loop channel. So what I'm gonna do is to, uh, that's one option anyways, is to click on the channel settings window. You just open that window. And if you have Cubase Pro, because this feature is a Cubase Pro feature only, um, is that you click on, first of all, you insert a plugin, that will have a phase reverse option or a polarity reverse option, uh, like I have on this BX console N uh, from Plugin Alliance. Um, so I have this uh, phase reverse option on top. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna activate it uh, to start with, and then I'm gonna click here on routing, just down the insert section of the um, channel settings window. By clicking on routing right on top, I'm going to have, again, my plugin on the first insert slot, and I'm going to have those two little icons, uh, which mean that I can actually um, apply that first plugin that is inserted on the first slot to any side of that uh, stereo channel. Okay, so I'm just going to click on that small arrow, and first of all, I'm going to select mono, and then I'm going to open the routing editor. And look at this. Now, at this point, this plugin is going to be uh, applied only on the left side of this stereo channel, not on the right. If I want to put it on the right instead, I'm just going to click on this, uh, on the right arrow, and I'm going to switch that to the right. So I'm going to bring it back to the left, and let's test this out. Cool. And I'm going to just bring it back to how it was before. Now we just did it for phase reverse, but you can actually do the same for, you know, any other parameters of this plugin. Okay, so you get the idea. So this is one way uh, where you can apply uh, some processing on the left side of a stereo channel, uh, independently from the left side. Okay, so um, there you go. So this is, uh, you just need to go down to routing and work this out. Now, the other option you have is to just uh, split that, uh, convert that channel into two mono channels. Um, and then you just need to go down to project and then to convert tracks and you select multi-channel channel to mono. That's it. Um, and then uh, you select the source tracks as multi-channel tracks. And option, you keep the source track if you want to, or you can mute the source tracks, delete the source tracks, or create a new project. So I'm just going to mute the source tracks uh, for this one. And then um, I have like different ways I can just, you know, name that uh, those new split mono files that are going to be created. I'm going to keep it as is and click on OK. And there you go. I have my two mono channels right here. And it did keep the uh, the plugin that I had on those channels, you know, so from the uh, stereo channels. So I'm just going to turn them off. Um, and so, you know, from that point, you can just, you know, phase reverse one of the channels straight from the uh, uh, the channel settings window if you want to. And do whatever you want. Now, they are both independent from each other. So they are on two separated mono channels. So this is how you can do this in the Cubase 10.5. All right, so now let's jump on the second question. 
Hello Chris, I kindly request you to upload a video on how to automate VST plugins effects in a track on Cubase Pro. Okay, so let's check this out. All right, so I'm gonna go and uh, let's look at this channel. Okay, I have this, um, let's go on the second verse. I have this electric guitar and we're gonna play around with the EQ of this channel. Automation in Cubase is not that complicated, and it's not only to automate the uh, the volume fader of a channel. You can actually automate almost everything uh, in Cubase, and especially plugins. And I do that all the time. I do automate plugins all the time. Um, so let's try it out on frequency. And I'm going to explain to you what you need to know when working uh, to automate a plugin in Cubase. Uh, so you insert your plugin, and then what you need to do is just to click on the right, right here, uh, right automation on the plugin or straight on the channel. It's not going to matter. It's going to activate itself on the plugin also. And then you just start moving the uh, the parameters that you want to work on. So let's say on, on my end, what I'm going to do here is to add a uh, high pass filter and a low pass filter. I'm going to automate this and we'll see how this is going to go. Okay, so I got this one. Now I'm going to play that again and now I'm going to automate the low pass filter. Okay, so let's check what we have now. Once we recorded some automation um, straight from the plugin, what we need to, uh, to check is this show hide automation. Okay, straight at the bottom left of the track I added some automation on. I'm gonna click on there, and now I'm gonna have my first automation lane that is gonna open. By default, this one is gonna be set up to volume. But since I added some automation on the plugin, if I click on volume, I'm gonna see the last automation moves that I did. It's, they're gonna be listed right on top. So I have my first band and I have my eighth band of frequencies that I uh, played with on this automation pass straight on the frequency plugin. And there you go. So now I, this is what I have for my first automation. And then on the second one, I'm just going to click again on the plus sign below that first automation lane. And that will give me the second automation that is already set up to EQ8. Okay. And now I have my second automation right here. Very cool. Okay. And this, from that point, I can just do everything manually if I want to. So this is one way to do it. If you wanted to, uh, if you wanted just to, to have those automation lanes listed, uh, straight on your channel, just, you know, record, uh, automate one move on your plugin, and you'll be able to select that uh, parameter off the automation lane. They are going to appear right on top. If you want to do it manually from the start, uh, what you can do is let's do it on the, uh, let's open the third one, and I'm going to go and click on volume. And now I have the list of everything, all the settings that can be automated. Um, so I'm going to click on more and I'm going to have the add parameter window. Um, I'm going to look for inserts. And now I'm going to have the list of all the plugins inserted on my channel. I only have one. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and that is going to give me everything that can uh, that can be automated from this plugin okay everything uh, so you can actually pick what you need and automate manually but it's going to be way faster just to record just a small uh, a small automation of the setting you want to you want to automate off your plugin so you'll be able to select it right away from the automation lane okay so let's do it again i'm just going to this time uh, automate i don't know uh, the uh, the output Okay, now I'm gonna go on my third automation lane, click on volume, and there you go, I have my frequency EQ output selected, and I have my automation. And from that point, let's say I just wanted to, I don't wanna keep what I did, I just need to remove all of my automation points and write this down manually if this is something that I wanna do. So this is a brief look on how you can automate the plugins in Cubase. Now let's jump on question number three. Hi Chris, how can I move my favorite custom created favorite plugin folder from one computer to another? So if we look at plugin folders, what we are essentially looking at um, is actually what you see right here. So if I click on an empty insert, I have access to my favorite plugins that I uh, created myself. It's my favorite 
plugin collection. Um, and to do so, I just went into Studio and the look for plugin, VST plugin manager, and I have all of this on the right side. I actually talked about that more than once on this channel. Uh, now, once you have all of your plugin collections set up. Um, if you want to transfer that or copy that into on, on a new computer or you have like a second laptop you work on and you want to keep those same uh, coll plugin collection folders, what you need to do is not too complicated and this is the, the best way to do it in my opinion, um, is you just open on Windows, and that can be done also, of course, on Mac. You just need to go down and look for uh, the Steinberg Cubase 10.5 in my case. So you just look for your Steinberg Cubase version, and you open the user settings data folder right here. And this is going to open the location where all of your settings are stored. And you can actually see the path right here on top. And what you are looking for is this little file right here, which is the plugin manager, XML. Okay, so this is what you need to copy on the same location on your new computer. And that's it. The next time you're going to open Cubase on the new computer, you will have access to your plugin collection. And the cool thing is that you can do this for other uh, settings of your Cubase that you want to transfer over to another computer, like, uh, I don't know, key commands or uh, your, uh, your user preferences. You want to transfer them over. You want to copy them over to another computer. In my opinion, this is the best way to do so. I hope that helps. Now, let's look at the last question for today's video. How do you remove rack instruments from a project? I actually received this question more than once. If we look in Cubase, and uh, we look on the right zone of the project window. On top, we have access to the VST, uh, VSTI tab, and this is where we create a virtual instrument channel. So an instrument channel is gonna be created straight on your project window, and this is where you'll be able to record your MIDI data, okay, like I did on uh, most of the, uh, the VSTIs on this project. Like this is one VSTI, this is another VSTI, and so on. But you can also uh, create a via virtual instrument channel as a rack instrument, meaning that this instrument is going to serve several MIDI channels. And for that, you just need to go at the bottom of the VSTI right zone and you will see rack right here. And this is where you'll be able to add a rack instrument. And this is what I did, and it created itself an instrument channel. And I have on this session several MIDI channels um, routed straight into this virtual instrument. But now if you want to delete this rack instrument, it's not like uh, we do with a track instrument. A track instrument, it's not that complicated. You select it, like if I select this one, you right click, you click on remove selected track, and that's it. And by doing so, it's gonna get off the project window and also off the track instruments that we have on the right zone. But for a rack instrument, it doesn't work this way. If I delete, let's say I wanna delete my rack instrument from the project window, I won't be able to. What I need to do for that to happen is to click right here on the racks. You select your uh, virtual instrument that you wanna delete, you click on the actual virtual instrument, and then, let me go back a bit, and then you just select no VST instruments. And now, I don't have any more virtual instruments in my project window. My rack instrument has been deleted. However, I still have access to all of my MIDI channels, and that is a good thing. So if you just want to get rid of that rack instrument to, uh, you know, to just load another one, uh, you can do so, and all the work that you've done uh, all the MIDI data that you've recorded are not going to be deleted. They are going to stay put in your project window. So there you go. This is going to be it for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like. And also, if you have questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. Until next time, take care and see you.